we come to a close as far as our series of services are together. Um, some, ser some meetings you wish it had a close before it ever started, but this hadn't been one of, one of those. Um, the Lord just met with us each and every night, and we trust that he, he already has tonight. You felt it awesome. That was, that was awesome. It just blessed my heart. Uh, if a man can't preach after that, he ought to quit. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, but I do want to thank you again, Brother David and Sister Lydia. Y'all have been so gracious hosts. And thank you all so much for the invitation, just the kindness that you've shown to us. Uh, Brother Warren, Sister Sandy, thank you all for opening your home to us. And um, what a blessing you all were to us. Brother Pete, Sister Shirley, again, it's just been a wonderful time together. And um, like the old Western that I used to watch growing up, because growing up in a preacher's home, I couldn't watch a whole lot of stuff. Um, but we, we'd watch Westerns every Saturday, and they used to sing a little song that said something like, No goodbyes, just so long for a while. And if we never meet again down here, um, I trust that I'm going to meet some of you in heaven now because of this week. And um, all of you who are saved, I'm going to meet you again in heaven. And I just can't help but feel from looking around and seeing the shape that the world is in um, that that time is drawing soon and very soon when we're going to go see the King. And Jesus Christ is going to return. And I look forward to that day. Um, I announced last night that I was going to preach tonight on the subject of the greatest verse in the Bible. Did anyone figure out what the greatest verse in the Bible is? Anyone want to take a stab at it? All of them. All, all, all right, brother, that's good. But that's not the answer I was looking for. The verse that kind of sums up the entire gospel, it's been called the gospel in a nutshell, is the verse John 3.16. And I, I believe that that is one of, if not the greatest verse in all the Bible, like our brother said. All of them are good. All of them are great. All of them are inspired, infallible, and in the inerrant Word of God. And tonight, though, I want to preach on John 3, 16. Um, probably the very first verse that I ever memorized as a kid growing up was John 3, 16. Many of you may have... If you've been in the church for a long time or even a short time, you've probably heard this verse. Maybe it was the first verse that you that you um, memorized yourself. So I'm just going to ask that we say that verse together. Can y'all handle that? This means yes. This means no. All, all right. Let's say that verse together, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is John 3, 16. That is the gospel in a nutshell. And I believe that it is the greatest verse in all the Bible. Um, it is rightfully called the gospel in a nutshell. Several years ago, I had the privilege of going up and, and spending a whole summer working at a youth camp in Upper East Tennessee at a place called Caswell um, with an evangelist friend of mine, Brother Ronnie Owens. And one week when we weren't having camp there at the camp, uh, he took all of us workers up to a little town in Ohio called Indian Lake, Ohio. Now, has anyone ever been to Indian Lake, Ohio? All right, just me. Um, Indian Lake is, a, is close to um, Lima, Ohio, also close to a place called La Pacaneta, which is the home of the astronaut Neil Armstrong. Some of you may, may have heard of that town. But uh, we went to this little town, and we set up a tent. At night, we had a tent revival. During the day, we had vacation Bible school. I never will forget, we came in on Saturday. We set the tent up, and we were just kind of hanging out there around the tent that night. Um, that, that night getting ready we were about to go back to the hotel where we were staying and there were two little boys that came up they were about 10 years old that came up to the tent 
And one's name was Ryan, and one's name was Matt. And the Lord just spoke to my heart. He said, you go over there and talk to those two boys. So I went over and I began to talk to Ryan and Matt. And make a long story short, I shared with them from the Bible how they could know for sure that if they were to die that they'd go to heaven and how Jesus Christ loved them, how we'd all sin and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, I, and to make a long story short, both Ryan and Matt, 10 years old, prayed and asked Jesus Christ to come into their heart and be their Savior. And so I gave them, we had some Bibles that we were giving to everyone that, that made a commitment to Christ that week. So I gave them the first two Bibles, and I told them, I said, now go home and start to read in the book of John. And I never will forget it. Friday afternoon came. We'd done the Bible school that morning. We were packing up the tent. We were getting ready to go. And Ryan and Matt came uh, came out there to see us off and, and came especially they wanted to tell me goodbye. And Ryan came up to me, and I never will forget it. He said, you know, you told me to start reading in the book of John. I said, yes. He said, well, I got over there to John chapter 3, and I got to John 3, 16. He said, man, that verse says it all. And I thought, man, that's right. It does say it all. John 3, 16 says it all. If you don't know any other verse in the Bible, if you don't know anything else about God, if you know John 3, 16, it says it all. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I praise God that he loved us that much. John 3, 16, as I said, I believe it's the greatest verse in the Bible. You say, why? I believe it's the greatest verse in the Bible, first of all, because it answers the primary questions of life. The primary questions of life is where did I come from and where am I going? I, I honestly believe the reason that our culture is in the shape that it's in, the reason that our country is in the shape that it's in, where it seems like darkness is getting darker and the country's getting darker each and every day that we live, I really believe that one of the problems and one of the reasons for that is because we do not know where we came from. You go to a science class, you go to a biology class, whether in high school or in college, and they'll tell you that you that billions and billions of years ago, somewhere out there floating around in the primordial soup was a single-celled amoeba, and somehow that single-celled amoeba began to get gills and became a fish, and then it decided to crawl up on dry land, and, and so it, it developed legs, and, and then it developed a tail, began to swing through the trees, and now now it's a professor with a Ph.D. Some of y'all get that after a while. Some of them, I wonder if they're not telling the truth sometimes. I don't know about you, but I don't have enough faith to believe that. What makes a whole lot more sense than that is that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And here in this greatest verse in the Bible, the very first two words is for God. You see, that is where we came from. All life came from God, and eventually all life will go back and stand before God and give an account for the things that we did in our bodies, whether they were good or whether they were evil. Where did I come from? I came from God. Why am I here? I am here to bring honor and glory to Him by having a relationship with Him through the shed blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Not only does it answer the primary questions of life, it also meets the basic need of the human race. The basic need of the human race is the need for love. All around us, people are crying out for love. Some of them are looking for love, as the old country song said, looking for love in all the wrong places. Some of them go to a bar looking for love. Some of them go to a bag looking for love. Some of them go from one relationship to the next, one sexual experience to the next. And let me just tell you, sin will never satisfy you. The only place that we can find true love is from the one who is love because God is love. It meets the basic need of the human race. Some kids get into gangs because they're searching for love. Some people get hooked on drugs and alcohol because they're looking for love. 
Some women go from one bad or abusive relationship to another because they're looking for love. That's why teens run away and get into prostitution because they're looking for love. And I'm glad the top was on that. Amen. That's why religious people and social outcasts get